Hey guys, what's up? This is Levi here with Food Fight VFX, bringing you a quick tutorial on how to use the new Adobe Photoshop Generative Fill with After Effects to enhance the backgrounds of your video files. Here's what we've got going on here for this tutorial. I just wanted to show you guys as simply as possible the very basic example of how you can use this, but the possibilities are completely endless if you just use a little bit of your imagination and what you've learned from this tutorial really there's limitless possibilities of what you guys can achieve. So I'm going to uncheck this layer here and this is what our original footage looked like. It was just this bar scene and we've got the bartender kind of throwing a towel up and over his uh, shoulder and kind of turning around and walking away. And what we've done for this shot is we've added in a cabinet door in place of some of these liquor bottles in the background. And what that's done for us is it's given us the ability to kind of change what's in the background. And you could do this with the Adobe Photoshop generative fill feature that came out with the most recent release of Adobe Photoshop. And there's lots of different things that you guys can do using this technique. You can do set extensions to add things into your background. So you have a drone shot with, you know, some mountains and you want to add in some castle ruins or you want to add in, you know, like a, like a moon or something into the sky. This is all achievable using this technique. But uh, we'll go ahead, we'll get started. First thing you want to do is take your footage, make a new composition. And this is just the clean plate of our footage with nothing going on with it. I'll go ahead, hit the enter key and just rename this clean plate. Not something that you have to do uh, while following along with the tutorial. I just like to kind of keep things as organized as possible. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to find a frame where nothing is covering over top of our cabinet, the area that we want to replace. So at the beginning, we have his arm is covering toward the end, the shoulder is kind of covering some of that area. And so we're going to find a spot kind of sort of right here in the middle. And this is a good frame right here, I think, to start. If I select my footage and I hit uh, the multiply key, you'll see here it creates a marker. And this lets us know where our source frame is, the frame that we kind of started everything out on. Now that that's done, we'll export this. So we'll go to composition, save frame as, file and we're going to go ahead and choose a PNG sequence because we want it to be in the RGB color space and we'll state it as still frame original. We'll hit save and we'll render that out. We'll hit OK. So now that that's rendered out, what we want to do is open that inside Photoshop. So I'll go to the folder where it is saved. I'll find the image. I'll right click open with Adobe Photoshop. What this does is it opens the image in Photoshop. It should launch Photoshop automatically if you have it installed. And here we are, we're, we're inside Photoshop now. Now, in order to use the generative fill, what you have to do is use a selection tool to select the area that we want to manipulate or change. So I'm gonna take the lasso tool right here, and I'm just going to click and drag and draw a shape around the part of the cabinet that we wanna replace. And once that's done, this generative fill feature pops up. If I click on generative fill, I can just type in what I want it to become. So I'm going to type in cabinet door and it starts generating using AI. Uh, this is very similar to like Midjourney or Dolly. Uh, this is going to essentially create a image using artificial intelligence and a neural net. It's pretty cool. One thing I should mention is that you do need to have an internet connection in order for this to work. But if we look over here to the right, it's created several different variations that we can pick from. I kind of like this last option. The center option is not too bad. First option is kind of unique. Let's say we want to generate a couple more images. We want, we want more selections. Up above the images, you can click on generate here and it will generate a new set of images, three more for us to kind of cycle through and pick from. So we'll pick from one of those six images once it is completed and we'll go from there. Let's give it another second or so and it should be there we are. So we've got three more images. And you know, I'm actually kind of liking this third image option here. You can see it's added lighting to match the other lighting. The coloring is matching the cabinets down underneath. It does a really good job at kind of figuring out what we're after, what we're looking for. So we're going to pick one that we like. And I'm thinking, hmm, let's just generate one more option here. All right, so it's generated three more options for us. Those have lights on them, they look kind of cool. 
we'll just go with this, this option right here. And if we look down here in the layers panel, we have the original image. If I deselect that, you'll see kind of what it's created here. It's taken the shape of our lasso and it has created a generative fill. And this is what we'll need to export. So you want to shut off the background layer and we're only exporting this, but we're exporting it as the same size as the original. So we'll go to file, we'll go to export, we'll click quick export as PNG, and then we'll save it. And we'll let that export out. Back inside After Effects, we'll go ahead, we'll import that cabinet and we'll drag it on top of our footage. Now, because we're on that source frame, it's going to line up. But you'll see here that if I scrub forward or back, it's not going to track into our shot. So that's what we need to do. We need to take this image, if I soloed it here, which is the same exact length and width as our video composition. And we need to tell it how the corners need to maneuver and position themselves in order for it to stay tracked in the shot. So we'll shut it off for now. We'll take our clean plate. And we're going to use an effect that comes with After Effects called Mocha AE. It's under the Boris Effects Mocha, Mocha AE. And we'll go ahead, we'll launch that. And then in our effects panel, you'll see the Mocha logo. You want to click on that and it will launch Mocha AE. Now that Mocha started, you'll see here that because we opened Mocha from that particular frame, we're here on the, on the playhead, we're on that frame. We're going to take the X spline tool and we're going to draw a shape by left clicking with our mouse around the area that we want to track. And it's going to be the same exact area that we did our generative fill. Once you're done, you can go ahead and right click, which will close out the selection. And then down here on the tracking features, we want to make sure we also choose perspective and we'll take the minimum pixels used and we'll crank that up somewhere between 80 and 90 or 80 and 100%. And once we've got the spline created, we'll click the track back or forward button. And you'll see here that it goes ahead and does the track. Now that tracked back to the beginning. Now I'll go back to where that keyframe was created and we'll track forward. You'll notice even as the towel went over top of the, of the track area, it still ignored that. It's, it's essentially holding on to as much image data as it possibly can here uh, of this background. All right, it's all done. That looks like a really good track. If I scrub back and forward it, on our timeline here, you'll see that that uh, spline stays pretty locked tight to our track. The next thing that we'll do is we'll click on this Show Planar Surface tool. It's just this blue box with an S in it. And you're going to see here that we've got this, this planar surface. If we expand the planar surface by clicking on the button here, that's going to expand the corners to the corners of our footage. And that should reference the top left, top right, bottom left, bottom right, and center of how we're gonna manipulate the image of our cabinet. So if I scrub forward, you'll see here that that blue planar surface box, it's kind of sticking to the wall. As the camera moves, it's staying tracked into the scene. And that's what it's gonna do to our footage of our cabinet. It's gonna do the exact same thing. I'll double click on the layer where it says layer one, and I'll just call this cabinet track. And we'll go ahead and close Mocha and make sure that we click save. And that brings us back into After Effects. Now, again, from that reference frame, what we want to do is from our clean plate, uh, the Mocha settings here, we want to drop down tracking data and click where it says click uh, create track data. And then we'll click that cabinet track and hit OK. We then want to apply it to our cabinet. So what we're going to do is under the export option, we're going to choose corner pin that supports motion blur. Because the camera's moving, there's going to be a little bit of motion blur. And then the layer we want to export it to is that still frame cabinet. And as long as that cabinet is the same length and width as our footage, which this image is, we should be OK to go ahead and click Apply Export. Now that I've done that, if I click on our cabinet layer and I click on the U key, give After Effects a second to catch up, it's going to show all of the keyframes for that tracking data. So we've got our upper left, our upper right, our lower left, our lower right, which are these icons right here. And then we've got our position, our scale, and our rotation, which is going to be the X and Y translation, the rotation, and the scale, like how big the image is. And so it has all of those based off of the track that we just pulled. And so now when we 
go ahead and do a quick RAM preview, you're going to see here that that cabinet stays locked in and tracks into our shot just perfectly. And this would apply no matter what you're doing to your background. You could be doing uh, a set extension, you could be adding something in or taking something away from your background like I mentioned earlier, and it's going to track into that wall just nicely. Now one thing you'll notice is that the towel is being covered over by the cabinet, so is his arm, and that's because our cabinet layer is sitting on top of our footage. So what we might want to do is duplicate our footage and place it over top of our cabinet, and we'll rename this Arm Roto, and we'll use the Roto Brush tool by selecting the Roto Brush tool. We'll go to a spot right after where we don't have to worry any longer about the uh, arm or towel covering and we're just going to shorten this clip and then double click on it and that will open up a layer panel where we can go ahead and apply our roto brush. So we'll go back to the beginning and if I solo this layer what you'll see here is as I draw over top of his arm it's gone ahead and cut that out of the shot and as we scrub forward in the layer panel you're going to see it's going to go through frame by frame by frame and generate or propagate the movement of his arm. So if you've never used the Rotobrush tool, this is kind of like an AI boosted feature. Uh, they just released Rotobrush 3.0, uh, so they overhauled it very recently, and that allows us to uh, pretty much do rotoscoping fairly quick compared to how we had to handle it before, which was using a mask and going frame by frame by frame by frame. But if you hold down the Alt key, you can actually turn the selection tool red and you can delete areas that you don't like. So that looks good. We'll go ahead, click freeze, and that's going to go ahead and go frame by frame and freeze out our roto selection. So we'll just let that do its thing. That's another reason why I shortened the clip because we didn't need to roto out his arm for the entire length. There's only that short, quick part at the beginning. And then when he whips his towel up, where it covers over the cabinet. So I only wanted to uh, apply this to a layer or a piece of footage that was shorter. So now that that's done, we can close our layer panel and we're just back in our comp window. We can unsolo this. We'll use motion blur and uh, that completes our shot. So what we've done is we've got our original clean plate, which has the liquor cabinet in the background. Then we've added in the cabinet and tracked it into our shot. And then we did a roto of his arm just to kind of cover back over the cabinet. This wouldn't be necessary if nothing covers over what you've added to your background. Uh, really, the possibilities are endless. And uh, you just got to use what you learned here in this tutorial and your imagination, and you should be all set. That's it for the tutorial, guys. I want to thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions about the process or technique, feel free to leave a comment. I'll try to get back to you as quickly as I can. If you guys liked the tutorial, found it useful, please like and follow my page here. I'm going to be posting more tutorials uh, into the future, covering all of the new features and tools with After Effects and other Adobe programs, and uh, show you guys how you can get the most out of the software for the least amount of trouble and third-party plug-in use as possible. So thank you again for tuning in. Once again, my name is Levi. This is Food Fight VFX, and we'll see you next time.